Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and lo do we mourn the loss of the Reddit non-meta tournament. <sighs> May it have a wholesome 100 big chungus time in heaven. Um, it's, uh, it's been a while since I've been able to upload whatever I wanted on Thursdays, uh, so I thought I would celebrate my newfound freedom by showing off something I am particularly proud of. This list got me King of Games last month in Duel Links. That's right. I got King of Games not only through Link Climb using Luna Lights, but also on my main account using Weather Painter. Um, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to go through the card by card of what I played, uh, give you the matchup knowledge that I accrued, and begin with a short pitch to download Duel Links. Folks, if you haven't downloaded Duel Links, there has never been a better time than now. Uh, we just got Zexel World, which means that if you sign up, you get a ton of freebies, and also Xyz are in the game. Uh, there are meta decks, of course, but the difference between what's meta and what isn't is a matter of inches, not feet like it is in TCG Advanced. And for what it's worth, with a couple of kind of niche exceptions, everything is interactive. You're going to be actually playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh!, which can't always be said of the paper card game. So with that, let's look at the list I played. So first, if you're unfamiliar with Duel Links, every list starts with a skill. This is a special ability that each character has. I picked Mako Tsunami and Balance. Now, many characters have Balance, but it's important that you pick Mako Tsunami because none of the other characters have the line, I'll teach you to stay out of the waters, and he says it all the time. The guy's got like two lines total. What did you expect? What Balance does is uh, it tunes your hand to the composition of your deck. So if you're playing six monsters minimum, six spells minimum, and six traps minimum, it will give you one apiece and then a fourth unknown card. I urge you to think of a monster, a spell, and a trap that don't pretty much win you the game in Weather Painter. Um, it is very difficult to fathom a hand that is unplayable under those conditions. Um, though I did a couple of times find one, uh, something like Cloudy plus Necro Valley plus Raigeki Break. In terms of matchups, if you've ever played Weather Painter in TCG, this should come as no surprise, but it is very feast or famine. You are either blowing your opponent out of the water and it's taking 45 turns to win, or you are losing spectacularly and you're dead before you had a chance to blink. Uh, your matchups are kind of determined before you get into the game. You have very many 90-10s. That's a huge turnoff for a lot of duelists, but I like it. It really takes the guesswork out of having to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh. So let's do the card by card. First, I've got three copies of Weather Painter Snow. If you're a budget player wondering where you can shave URs so you don't have to go through a box three times, uh, right here. You really only have to play two copies of this card, and many meta weekly winners do so. It's very, very good turn one, and then very, very bad every subsequent turn unless you have been absolutely annihilated but haven't lost the game, which happens extremely infrequently. That said, it is so good turn one that I was playing three. Uh, when you normal summon this monster, it sets a canvas from your deck, and while there are only three worth playing in Duel Links, they're really worth playing. Next is Weather Painter Thunder. This card, like all the Weather Painters, uh, can banish itself to tag out for one of the effects of the uh, canvases and return the next turn. But unlike the Weather Painters that are usually played, it has attack points. Uh, it's got cool niche combo applications and massive synergy with uh, the Weather Painter Cloud, but more importantly than anything else, you don't have anything like Aurora in Duel Links, and as a result, this is the only way you are going to hurt your opponent's life points. Uh, a 3 attack clock is not fantastic, but it's better than a 5 attack clock, and that is why we're playing this at 3. We're also playing one copy of Cloud. Cloud has a hidden passive that I was not aware of until I reached Legend. Uh, if you normal summon this card, your opponent stops reading. I know, I was shocked too. Uh, if a Weather Painter Spell or Trap is sent to the graveyard while this card is on your field, you can set two from your graveyard back. So a lot of times, your opponent will do something like Raigeki break your Weather Painter Thundery Canvas while Cloud is out, just to watch it immediately come back and shame concede. For spells, we are playing Valhalla Hall of the Fallen. I'm only playing one copy of this. It's in a box that none of the rest of the stuff is, and I didn't want to spend a lot of dream tickets on it. Um, but it has really good applications with Thundry specifically. If you get both Thundry and Valhalla in your opener, you can special summon Thunder off of Valhalla's effect, 
activate Thunder's effect in order to send Valhalla to the graveyard for a snowy canvas, activate Thunder's snowy effect in order to search the Weather Painter's snow, then normal snow to set the Weather Thundery canvas. And that's your whole setup off of uh, that two-card synergy. I'm also playing one Necro Valley. Card's insane. Should... Uh, probably not be in this game. It is an extremely powerful floodgate and hits pretty much everything that's meta relevant in some capacity, except for us. We're playing three copies of the Weather Snowy Canvas. Uh, this gives all the monsters that it points to, uh, adjacent to it, um, the ability to tag out at instant speed, banish themselves for cost, and search a weather card from their deck to their hand. Now, you can only search once per turn. It cuts off searches after you do it, but if you activate them all in a chain, they can all tag out. So if you have a couple of monsters that are being targeted by a treacherous trap hole, for example, you can tag them both out and they'll both come back even if you're only getting the one search. Uh, the weather cloudy canvas is not particularly good, uh, but there's no hard once per turn on this at all. Um, it can change the attack of a monster to half its normal attack, but it can attack directly. This is very critical for getting in the last points of damage a lot of the time. Usually you'll be able to get in pretty easily twice with thunder, and the third time might be very difficult. Cloudy resolves that. It also allows all of your monsters to tag out at instant speed, provided there's another monster on the field, because it doesn't discriminate between yours and your opponents. Uh, and it can help stem the bleeding if your opponent has a bunch of monsters with a ton of attack, and all you've got to your name is like a snowy canvas in defense. For traps, we're on two Raigeki Break. A lot of people play Karma Cut in this slot. I don't like it. Uh, I like the ability to destroy spells and traps, and I use it constantly. We're playing three copies of Weather Thunder Canvas. This is the reason to play the deck. Uh, when your Weather Monster uh, attacks or is attacked in the damage step, you can banish it to put your opponent's monster back in the hand. In a metagame that is chock full of monsters that sit in the extra deck, this is fantastic. Unfortunately, it is not particularly good against stuff like Witchcrafter or dark magician so you know there are some some scenarios where like putting a rod back in your opponent's hand just for them to plus next turn is is very bad and finally we're on two treacherous trap hole this is a little sus because of course uh, we've got other traps in the deck uh, but usually you will find it first and you want to resolve it before uh you're resolving uh any of your thundery canvases or putting any of them in harm's way in a pinch you can get the thundery canvases out of your graveyard with cloud but it happens very infrequently the extra deck Complete nonsense. You don't need any of it, uh, but if you are interested in playing it, Ojama King is indispensable. Uh, the Jinns actually do come up occasionally. Uh, you often run out of Thundery Canvases. These convert multiples of Snowy into potential attackers, but really have to get to a grind scenario for that to ever matter. Uh, same with Grenosaurus. Um, he's just in here because he's a three. So that's that. I was really happy with my performance and the performance of this deck. I got it in uh, well under 100 games, and um, I think if your curiosity has been piqued by this or any of my other Duel Links content, I hope you will give it a go. Thank you.